Hello everyone, my name is Derica Sissing. I'm the elementary art teacher at Blissfield. Today I am here to show you how to make this mixed media abstract canvas from supplies that I have found at our local Dollar Tree. What you'll need to get started is a canvas panel. Um, I found this one for $1 at the Dollar Tree. Um, you could also use paper, whatever you may have at your home. Um, and you're also going to need some materials uh, to trace. So I happen to have this little um, shape tracer. I'm also going to be utilizing um, this long edge here. If you happen to have a ruler, you could use that instead of this. And some objects that I found in my home. So here I just have some uh, mixing bowls that I use um, for cooking. So let's go ahead and get our canvas prepared. I am going to find Cool. Let me open up my canvas with you. And like I said, if you don't have um, a canvas panel, you could go ahead and just use um, a piece of paper you may have at your house. That would work just as fine. All right. Um, as the artist, you get to decide whether your composition or your overall artwork is going to um, be a horizontal one going side to side like this or whether you'd like it um, in a vertical orientation. When you're trying to decide um, about how many objects you're going to draw in your overall artwork, um, I always like to think about using odd numbers uh, because odd numbers are more interesting in works of art. Um, numbers like three or five or seven or nine. And this example that I've made for us, um, I, I kind of worked with some large shapes and also some small ones, um, and also dividing my um, composition in an interesting way using diagonal lines. So I think I'm gonna work with one of these large mixing bowls first. I think I'm gonna lay it here on the edge of my canvas. I like the idea of it going off of my composition um, or artwork here. And so when I'm drawing these pencil lines, they don't really need to be dark. They're just a guide mark to give me an idea of where I'm going to apply my paint. So that looks great. But I also want to capture um, that little bit of the edge here where it's kind of hanging off. All right, that looks interesting. I think I want to put maybe one in the center too to kind of break up that space in an interesting way. Um, a repetition is where you use uh, similar shapes or objects in an artwork. Here uh, I'm using repetition by repeating different sizes of circles. Maybe I put another one over here. So at this point I have three um, circles in my artwork. I said I want to work with odd numbers. You could do this on a larger or smaller scale. That's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to do, I don't know, maybe, I'm trying to line this up so the circle that I just traced is in the center of this bowl, um, but maybe I can give the illusion that this circle is under the one that I just drew. Do you see how it makes it look like this one is on top and this one is behind or overlapping? Right, so so far I have an even number but I said we want to try and go for odds so I think I may come in now um, oh, that could be maybe I can have this popping off the edge of my canvas you could use the lid um, off of uh, some food container that you may have I'm just kind of playing around and thinking. I'm feeling very symmetrical today. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can come in here now and think about utilizing some of these diagonal lines to kind of break up my artwork. So I have a line here. Oh, I'm back to an even number, aren't I? Fun. I like to use um, something that I like to call an artist's intuition 
where I'm just kind of um, playing around and doing what feels what feels right and fun in the moment. There is no right or wrong answer in art, and that feels wonderful. To know that any choice I make is a good one it can be very freeing. Especially knowing that I didn't pay a lot of money for this canvas. It takes a lot of the stress out of it, too. Maybe I just want to leave that one line there. All right. I'm not going to get rigid and kind of too uh, over-concerned about the number of lines that I have. I think this is a really fun start, and I can break up some more of these spaces as I move forward with adding color. All right, so tinker around and um, kind of uh, continue uh, finishing up your underdrawing, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to add color. All right, I hope you guys are ready to start adding some color. I have a couple of different thoughts for you as it relates to adding color to this canvas panel. Um, which you can find at the Dollar Tree. Um, for this one, I've actually used um, watercolor paints. And so um, those are uh, very readily available and very affordable. And so um, I think that is a great option for you. Um, I have this watercolor palette um, that I will demonstrate for you today. Um, I love that it has lots of variety, but variety is not necessarily important because you can make uh, your own custom colors using just a few. So I would also like to talk to you about that. Um, these little bottles of paint I actually purchased at the Dollar Tree for just a dollar. Um, and if you get your primaries like red, blue, and yellow, um, and maybe even a white, you can make all sorts of different colors just by um, experimenting and mixing um, these colors together to create new ones. So I'll actually um, show you both of these kind of techniques to get some base color down on the canvas before we finish it off with um, some kind of uh, printmaking and also tinkering onto the surface of it to finish it off. Um, I don't like to be fussy about what uh, paint palette I use. I just like to be thankful for what I may have in my home. And so this is a box of macaroni and cheese that I made for my kids last night for dinner. And so what you can do is just kind of open this guy up and use this as your um, kind of paint palette. If you are using a liquid type of paint like the acrylic that I showed you um, that comes in the bottle, or even if you may have um, some tempera. When you go to add color today, um, you want to be thinking about color families and um, maybe even sticking to either a warm or a cool color palette. Um, a warm color palette would be like reds, oranges, or yellows, and a cool color palette would be like greens, blues, and purples. Um, you can use both color families kind of together. That's okay too. Um, you just want to be careful when you go to mix them together because you can end up with some colors that maybe uh, you weren't hoping for. And it can kind of get a little bit muddy. So I think I'm going to put all of these colors down on here. I'm putting blue and this pink together because I don't have a purple, but I can surely make one. So I'm going to use this to represent uh, the red because they did not have a true red there on the day when I went and picked it up. Um, this paint. I can even make a custom color by mixing those up, even though I didn't mean for that to go over there. Okay. So let me demonstrate using this type of paint first, and then I'll show you about how to use um, watercolors as an option as well, and how fun uh, those can work um, on this canvas panel. All right, so I do have myself a cup of water here. Um, using water really isn't uh, necessarily a good thing when you're working with uh, acrylic paint unless you're very careful about getting all of the water out of your brush. If you leave a lot of that water in your brush as you bring it out, it can dilute your paint and make it very uh, watercolor-like. So when I'm taking my brush out of this uh, cup here, I like to kind of run it along the edge and get rid of that excess water before I go to pull my brush out. So, oh, I just love painting. Isn't it so beautiful? see if that might help it out. I don't know which way is better. Um, so I'm just using uh, just a, like a medium round brush here. 
Um, I don't think your your brush is all that important. It's all in, in what you make it do. So just have fun and play around. And you can work a little bit faster as you're working in the center of these shapes. Um, and you can slow down when you get to your edges. Right, so then you can balance your hand and run it along that edge very carefully. See how you get much more control there where you balance your hand right on the canvas maybe. Take a break when your hand gets tired or you feel like you're losing control. As you're painting, just like when we were adding our shapes in our original underdrawing, um, you want to use repetition as well. So if you've used the color uh, yellow once here, you'd also want to add yellow in another place in your artwork, maybe even uh, three times because the more your eye sees something similar in an artwork, the happier it is. Think about a, a common a sound in a song that's your favorite and how your ear really um, likes to hear that sound over and over again. So there's my first little shape and that's looking wonderful, uh, a wonderful semicircle. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and show you about using this watercolor palette. You do not need one this extravagant. You could certainly just use um, one that maybe you've had for school if you're a student or, or your child's if you're a parent. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can actually activate um, the surface of the canvas with a little bit of water first. Um, and then you can put your paint on top. This is called a wet on wet technique which can also refer to putting a wet paint next to wet paint, but that gives a much more uh, soft sort of effect. It's kind of dreamy. And what's neat about it is your paint will only flood into those areas that you've moistened with the water. It's almost like a magnet that drags the color about. Um, but your color is going to look a lot more um, translucent and a, and a lot less um, opaque and solid. So if you like the, the effect of a color that's a little more solid, what you can do is just go directly from your uh, watercolor palette onto your canvas and the color will look a little um, bit darker. So take your time, have fun, be thinking about those different color families, um, whether you're gonna stick with warms or cools or whether you're going to use both. Um, and I'll see you back for uh, the finishing off of our artwork. All right, everyone, um, we finished painting. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to experiment with adding um, warm colors, cool colors, or a combination of both, which I have done in this canvas. Um, I also um, took my time and, and really tried to follow my um, curved lines and diagonal lines very carefully and I also applied two coats of that acrylic paint that I uh, showed you from our last video. So to finish this off, um, you can do a lot of different fun things. You could certainly just leave it like it is. Um, that looks beautiful. Um, in this one, you can see that it has a much more um, kind of transparent effect, and that's because in this one, I, I primarily used uh, watercolor paints. Um, here is an example that's much more um, similar to the one that I demonstrated for you here, where I've used opaque, uh, temp or, uh, opaque acrylic paint. So I wanted to show you how I added some of these really um, interesting, unique sort of areas of interest using um, different tools uh, that I found at the Dollar Tree as well. Um, I like to make art approachable and affordable um, to all people. That's really important to me. So you can use a lot of different things. You could certainly use um, fine or ultra fine Sharpies to kind of doodle and tinker, um, just adding different lines and shapes. Um, Metallic Sharpies are always a really fun option. I found these chalk markers at the Dollar Tree um, as well, and these are really fun to work with. Although they're intended for a chalkboard surface, um, these actually work really well on um, a painted surface like this, and I can demonstrate these for you. Also, going back to uh, your paint 
and um, kind of stamping using different uh, things that you may find in your home like a uh, chopsticks or even the caps to um, maybe a water bottle that you have in your house. Here are some other items that I found at the Dollar Tree that are really fun to stamp through. Things like stencils or even um, makeup brush scrubbies. You can actually apply paint onto these and uh, stamp it directly onto your canvas. Um, those are really fun. This is a shelf liner that I've just cut into a small piece that a paint can be applied to and you can stamp it onto your canvas. Um, and here's another stencil example. This stencil, I was so excited to find. Um, I think that this one is really fun and it has a, a lot of different options that you can work through. Um, I think I'm gonna show this one um, to you right now. And I'm actually going to use a non-traditional material like um, a bingo dauber um, to kind of apply this through. Um, if you see this area here with these little dots, I actually used this uh, pink bingo dauber through um, the circles on this uh, stencil. And I think that turned out quite interesting. I really love sort of the irregularity and variety um, that turned out there. And I even went through and stamped into some of those spaces using some white paint. All right, let's do this first. And then I'm gonna show you about this chalk marker. So you can take something like a bingo dauber here and you can just stamp right on top of it. And you can be um, even a little, oh, look at how fun that is. You can be a little, you know, haphazard about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You could print another one directly next to it to kind of create um, an overall sort of design in that whole orange area, that yellow orange color. And even if it, uh, you know, kind of blacks out there, I, I like to embrace those um, little accidents and and not choose to see it as a mistake, but more as an opportunity to experiment there. So even though it kind of got blocked out, you can go in there and tinker and um, re-embrace those lines using some Sharpie. See how fun that is? I think that's really beautiful. And you can, um, you know, just work, if you laid this here, you could just work in this sort of semicircle area to just give that print to that space. That turned out really neat. Um, maybe let's experiment with some of these chalk markers. I'll move this up here so you can kind of see. You could, um, you know, do a couple of different things. You could use it just to kind of come around your edge and kind of just follow, you know, along the outside of a shape, maybe down here. I love how creamy these are and I love the, the textured effect that it gives. Um, or you could I want it to contrast for you here in the video. Um, you could do different types of um, shapes where you could come on here. I don't know if this is going to contrast enough. It might, might be hard to see. Yeah, I think it is hard to see, but it's really, really beautiful. I love this subtle kind of um, value shift between this yellow and this pink. Your circles can start to descend in size and get a little bit smaller as they come around there. Um, you could follow along and do some different uh, lines. Just have fun playing on the surface of your canvas. I think that looks really fun. Um, I'll demonstrate one of these little lids for you. Actually, I did a little bit of printing using this lid here, um, my bingo dauber lid. Um, we could come into possibly, I'm gonna go into this blue here. So I'm just kind of um, stamping it into my blue paint. And you can kind of give it a little bit of pressure and you can create things like little uh, circles or even using a piece of cardboard. I think that looks really cool. I love how it gets a little bit more um, faint in some areas. That looks great. And as some of these spaces dry, you can go back in there 
here's like what I was telling you where even if you do um, kind of um, block out an area you can just go back in there with your sharpie and show some more of those um, areas here's some metallic sharpie area that I've kind of worked in almost creating a flower like sort of um, image here with one of the prints I made with a uh, uh, bingo dabber lid um, just have fun playing and exploring um, I hope that you had so much fun with this lesson and I hope that you all are enjoying your summers um, stay creative and see you guys later. Bye!